Thank you all for being here. Pretty excited to be in Florida. It's a lot warmer than Colorado. What's that? Better than minus. It is better than minus, yeah. Although it wasn't, it wasn't minus in Colorado, it was chilly. Yeah. Make sure you're in the right room. Um, so thanks, y'all, for being here. We're going to be talking about something that I'm really excited about, something I spend a lot of time talking about and um, working on with my team and with our clients. We are going to be talking about working with layout paragraphs. It's a tool for providing effortless drag and drop publishing in Drupal. My name's Justin. I work with Atten, a strategy design and development company. We work primarily with .org, .gov, .edu uh, organizations or organizations that are in those domains. So a lot of government work, a lot of higher ed work, a lot of um, nonprofit work. And a lot of what we do with clients is working on helping create authoring experiences that really empower folks in marketing and editorial teams to do their jobs, to work with content. And that's going to be a lot about what we're talking about today, or a big part of what we're talking about today is specifically tools for editorial and marketing teams uh, in Drupal, all built, everything we'll be talking about today is built on top of layout paragraphs, so, uh, which is a module in Drupal we'll get into here in a minute. So what we'll cover specifically, I'm going to talk about first what is layout paragraphs exactly, cover just briefly uh, current status and adoption of the module. I'll do a demo of layout paragraphs running on a Drupal 9 website that is a fresh install. I think I just ran the install process yesterday, so I'm literally brand new out of the box. I'll talk a little bit about tools for helping automate web governance as it applies to layout paragraphs specifically. That's mainly in the context of what I'm talking about today. That's mainly permissions management, managing who can do what, where, again, specifically layout paragraphs. And we'll just spend a minute or two on that. Um, I do want to talk about layout paragraphs and decouple. That's going to be pretty high level, mostly talking about what comes out of JSON API with layout paragraphs. We'll do another demo of a customized, a more heavily customized example from a client project and should have some time for, uh, plenty of time for questions and discussion. So. Uh, some prereqs real quick. I mean, experience using Drupal is a big plus. Don't think that would be a problem here. Um, experience with the paragraphs module. Has, has everyone in the room used paragraphs module, or most folks have used paragraphs? To a lot of people, yeah, cool. Um, experience with content types and fields, working with users, roles, and permissions, although we're not going to get too deep into that today. Familiarity with the JSON API, only because we will be touching briefly on what is exposed by default from layout paragraphs with the JSON API. And that's it. So first, what is layout paragraphs? Um, layout paragraphs is a module. It's a module on Drupal.org. This is a link to the module page. Uh, layout paragraphs provides really easy to use expressive, what we call expressive, drag and drop content authoring. So tools that really kind of mirror what, again, editorial folks and uh, marketers are looking for. Layout paragraphs is built on top of structured content. When we think of structured content, we're mostly thinking about fieldable entities in Drupal, specifically in this case, paragraphs and nodes. Um, layout paragraphs leverages familiar workflow and configuration, so it's not something completely different. It works uh, with things that we're already all familiar with, fields, field formatters, widgets, etc. No migration necessary usually. Layout paragraphs works out of the box with paragraphs, so if you're using paragraphs in your Drupal site already, um, pretty easy to just install and be up and running. We'll take a look at how that works. Also works with JSON API out of the box, so if you are using Drupal for headless, um, working with layout paragraphs, you can push layout data or structured data out to your headless apps and uh, provides APIs for further improving the author experience. So we'll talk a little bit. We're, we've been working on a, a product that's built right on top of layout paragraphs called Mercury, Mercury Editor, that I'll just demo a little bit when we when I show the, the second demo that I mentioned. Um, and that really kind of shows off some of the capabilities of layout paragraphs as a foundation, providing those APIs for uh, improving, further improving the author experience. 
All right, again, I'm Larry Pierre Rest of Mago. You can check it out on the Drupal.org Mago page. There's two releases. We're pushing everybody to get off the 1.0.0 release in favor of the current stable release 2.0.0. Um, the current, the 2x branch is a complete rewrite of the 1x branch. So the functionality is similar. The APIs have all been changed. The underlying structure of the module has been completely changed. Um, the upgrade path is real simple, or the upgrade process is real simple. Upgrade it, run it, update.php. Um, very little changes in terms of underlying uh, the underlying data structure. Mostly it's just the interface that's changed. The interface and, and the application layer itself. Adoption continues to grow. We're just going to the watch. We're up over 5,000. Uh, folks using layer pair refs based on just data pushed out by Drupal um, is quite a bit, maybe close to twice what it was last year when I talked about this. So again, been really fun to see that. Hey, that's okay. All right, that's some really high level info about what layer pair refs is. I'm going to jump over to a demo. Um, so I'm going to talk about this in the context. We all can just imagine for a minute. So I, I run an agency. We do a bunch of client work. Uh, that's like all we, like everything we do. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this through the lens of imagining that we just want to publish case studies, that we want to write a case study. Um, and talk a little bit about how Drupal might accomplish that, like publishing just content to tell the story of how we work with a client. So these are content types that are article and basic page or content types that ship with Drupal by default. You click into an article. And this is, we, we are, is the public television station in the DC, in the greater DC, Washington DC area. Um, imagining that we might want to tell the story of how we worked with WIDA. This is maybe how we would approach it with just using a content type that's pushed out of Drupal by default. We have an image, some copy, does a decent job of, again, just giving us the tools we need to start thinking about telling the story of how we worked with a particular client. Often, Virtually always, we want to go deeper. We want to tell a more uh, dynamic story, again, that goes into more depth about how we work with a particular client. And for that, we'll take a look at this, just kind of reimagine a little bit. And again, this is with no front end design, no theme work whatsoever. This is just what's pushed out of just pushing content into uh, some of the models that we'll be talking about. Um, this is a look at maybe the same type of content, but that goes into a little bit more depth, more copy. We have a slideshow, again, just using kind of what is provided, installed straight out of the box, so no customization whatsoever. Image, text, another image, some more text. And you can imagine that from one case study to the next, we might want these components to change quite a bit. That's where Paragraphs is really powerful. Paragraphs provides the ability to start breaking down content into these smaller chunks. So I hit the Edit tab. Um, start scrolling through here. Each of these is a paragraph. If you're not familiar with the paragraphs model, it looks like most folks right in the room are familiar with paragraphs. So each of these is a paragraph. Um, works really well for, again, building more complex types of content with a really wide range of uh, different components that might be supported or paragraph types that might be supported. If I want to add more content, I can go down to the bottom, choose from the list of what's available. We've got all these different paragraph types that we could choose to add. I could add my new paragraph type, so add some new text, and then drag this wherever I need it to go. Um, it works pretty well. It's a little, it can be a little challenging, a little cumbersome. The interface can be a little cumbersome if we want to create even more sort of dynamic content. When we start thinking about layout, for example, with this, with a paragraphs configuration, at least the way we used to do this. We go to the bottom, we'd maybe have a section called or a paragraph type called container. Maybe in container we'd have a reference to some left column content and some right column content. So we throw these things in here. And then the challenge is if we wanted to move what we're calling, uh, well, first of all, this would take a lot of kind of theming work to make this look correct and actually make this fall in the structure or into a, to the layout that we want. Um, if we want to move these components around, there's no way to move this right paragraph. It's been created just in the context of this right column reference. There's no way to move it anywhere else on the screen. So it can be a little cumbersome. Okay, so that's kind of the problem that we, we wanted to tackle, we wanted to solve. We started working on layout paragraphs now quite a while ago. 
um, is provide again a more expressive uh, experience for creating that kind of content and working with layout. So we'll take a look at how that works with layout paragraphs and what layout paragraphs has to offer in that kind of setting. We go over to content types. Um, I have installed the layout paragraphs module. It's really that in addition to paragraphs is pretty much all that's going on here. I go into manage form display down to the content and simply change the formatter, the field formatter to layout paragraphs. Show me the right thing here. Great. So all I've done is change under manage form display for the content type in question for basic page. I've changed the paragraph reference field widget from the classic widget to the layout paragraphs widget. Go back to content. Go back into my basic page, hit edit. And we have a much different interface now for working with that content. Um, one, we have, you know, for each paragraph that's added on the page, still dealing with the exact same structure, exact same set of, exact same models pushing out the content, still dealing with entities and uh, feelable entities. Uh, but for each paragraph, we have controls for editing. We can quickly duplicate. So if you have more complex, you can imagine more complex paragraph types where you might have a collection of fields and you want to quickly duplicate that and move it elsewhere on the page or use that as a template to start uh, making some uh, changes to. We can bump these things up and down pretty easily with these keyboard controls. It's also a drag and drop, which was one of the major original goals of this. So we can drag these things around. And then what we really see this start to become powerful is when we think about layout and wanting to be able to structure these pages in a more, again, just a more dynamic way, wanting to have more, more control over the interface. If I wanted, for example, just to move this image into the left column and the text maybe into the right column, now I can drop in a section, choose the number of columns. I've just added this two column section. I'm gonna grab this image and move it into the left column grab this text, put it in the right column. Maybe I'll do the same thing up here, but in reverse. So another section, two columns. Right there we go. Put the image, or the text rather, in the left, and the image in the right. And you can imagine what that would be like manipulating the layout over the, the entire page and kind of the different, uh, the wide variety of control that that gives over working with content and structuring layout. Um, that's a really quick, simple overview, again, of how layout paragraphs works. I'll, I'll dive into some other configuration options here in a minute. If we see, as I was talking about before, there's that duplicate option. You can imagine creating a more complex section with nested components within it. It's really easy to just duplicate that entire section again and then maybe start editing that content again as, as sort of a, a template for making it simpler again to make more rich, dynamic types of content in different contexts. Um, super easy to use, really easy to get started with. If, again, if you're using paragraphs, all you've got to do is install the Layout Paragraphs module. Once you install the Layout Paragraphs module, and I'll just spend a minute um, talking about how to actually get rolling with this. Let me save this action. We'll take one, another look at some configuration stuff here. So if I save this page, Right out of the box, this isn't looking quite right. It's repeating some of these elements. I need to go back into the content type and make sure not only that layout paragraphs is chosen as the widget or the form, but we also need to make sure that in the display, the layout paragraphs is the chosen format for rendering the content. So it's both the, the field widget I mean, it also provides a formatter. Hit save, go back to the content that we were just working on. And now it will correctly render those layouts without repeating the elements going on the page. So just in the, the correct format. So a little hard to follow there, but the bottom line is you've got to have the formatter. The formatter for your content needs to be using layout paragraphs in addition to uh, the field widget. We'll take a look for just a minute at some of the settings for layout paragraphs. If I go back into structure, um, take a look at, start with paragraph types. One, one important piece in the configuration for layout paragraphs 
is creating a paragraph type to store the actual layout data, to store the information about layout, the columns, etc. There, any paragraph type, um, you can you can do that with any paragraph type. In this case, I've created a, a special or a designated paragraph type called section. If I go in and edit section, we'll see that the layout paragraph's behavior is turned on for section. Once you turn on the, the behavior, you'll have a list of all layouts that are available in Drupal. There's a number of layouts. In fact, I think all of these here are coming from Layout API in Drupal core. So when you turn on layout paragraphs, you'll get a list of layouts here. You can define your own layouts using the Layout API. Anything you define in the Layout API, any third-party layouts that are defined via the Layout API will show up in this box. Simply choose the layouts you want to be available with your paragraph type. In this case, I'm calling it section, and then it, it's available. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean if we just go back to this content. So here again, I've selected for the section paragraph type. I've chosen the different layouts that I want to be available. One column, two, and a couple three column ones. If I go back to the content, click on edit, add a section, that's what's mapping to these layout choices here across the top. If your layout plugin defines any custom options, which in, Drup in core Drupal there's just one, it's this administrative label which doesn't really isn't really even necessary in the context of layout paragraphs, but if your layout plugin defines any custom options, they would be available in this form. Let's take a look at some of the settings for layout paragraphs and some of what um, the additional capabilities in the module. Let me go back into content types, basic page, back into manage form display. Um, there are a number of options provided by the field widget. Starting with preview, view mode, this says what view mode do we want to use to render paragraphs in the back end? Like when we're looking at the edit screen, what view mode do we want to use to render those paragraphs? Is anyone not familiar with the, the concept of view modes in Drupal? Everybody is familiar with view modes? Great. So very simply allows us to select what view mode we want to use. Um, when working in, in the back end, working in the, the field edit setting. Uh, nesting depth just says how many levels deep do we want to support nesting sections. We can go up to 10 levels deep. Don't know why anyone ever would want to. Um, but if we if we show what this looks like, so at zero, I'm just going to get this content going in another tab here. When it's set to zero, which is the default, if I go back in to edit this content, um, once we have created a section, so in this case we're dealing with a section with two columns, if I go to add more content, section is no longer an option because we've said nesting is not supported, the level is zero. If I switch that to say two levels, hit update, save, refresh the page, we now have section as an option, we can throw a two column inside a two column or whatever we want, throw another section inside that section, this gets pretty crazy pretty fast. Um, and then that's it. So we've set up to two, two levels deep, and so that's all that's supported. Let's see here. And the last option here, the, the last couple of meaningful options here, um, require paragraphs to be added inside a layout. So if you select that option, just Get about our changes. Um, now you, that option says you have to push, you have to create a section first. You can't just create paragraphs outside of a section. So the thing about, like, mentioned governance at the beginning of this, that's one one option for just saying one very simple option for saying this can be uh, this this type of content cannot be created in this other type of content. In this case, we're just saying. Um, sections must be created as the container. We can't create just a, a text paragraph at the main level. So we'd have to create a section. Once we have a section, then we can add any of those uh, paragraph types to that. That was the most complicated way to describe that possible. All right. Uh, that's a quick look at how layout paragraphs works and what some of the options are out of the box. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what's next. So I'll talk a little bit about more about permissions. So one question that comes up 
frequently is how to help control what can be published where. So one, one concern, one of the, the whole goals behind layout paragraphs was to create a module that allows us to, to design component driven authoring systems. Where we have like a design system, the designer creates designs that adhere to a, to a set of design principles, and we then empower authors to publish using those components. And the challenge in that is often we don't want users to be able to publish some components into some sections, um, or we just want to provide control around who can publish what and where those different components can be published. There are a few models that help with that right out of the box. First is just the paragraphs permission submodel. This is a submodel of paragraphs, um, but when enabled, it allows you to say who can publish what paragraph types. That works seamlessly with layout paragraphs. So that's, again, the beginning of saying who can publish what um, in what context. The layout paragraphs permission submodule allows you to tie permissions for working with layout paragraphs to roles. So you can say who has access to drag and drop, duplicate behavior settings, which I'll show an example of here in a minute. Um, and then finally, there's a module that's uh, still just a dev release for that's available on Drupal.org layout paragraphs restrictions, which allows programmatic definition of what can be published where. It provides a really easy set of hooks for saying this group of, of paragraph types, or we, we often talk about these in terms of components, but this group of components can be published within this section, this region, not this other section of this other region. Um, and then all of these models also provide a really great framework or example for learning how to approach this whole problem of how do we how do we kind of uh, put rules around what can be published where and start again building some of that automation around design systems. Because layout paragraphs is built on entity reference fields and in the field API in Drupal, its data is immediately by default exposed to the JSON API. Um, if anybody's working on headless projects or decoupled, you are probably using JSON API to publish content or to push content rather through a REST API. Um, all that data is available by default with layout paragraphs. Just a quick look, real hard to see what's going on there, but a quick look at some code at what's actually pushed out by JSON API. Right in here under behavior settings, we have the layout information associated with the section. So we have our layout ID, which you could use on the front end to kind of rebuild a layout. You could say, okay, if this is two column, render with this particular component, um, three column, etc. cetera. We take one more look, and this will be it as far as looking at actual uh, JSON output or code, but one more look at this. The section component will have information about the layout with the layout ID. If there was any configuration attached to that, it would show up here, show some examples in a minute. For the, the content component, which belongs inside the section, it simply has the parent that it belongs to and the region. And using the combination of those two, uh, of that data, fairly simple to rebuild a layout or to construct a layout in your, your front end uh, framework. I'm going to do one more demo. I do want to talk just briefly. So this is built, what I'm about to show is using Mercury. Mercury is a, for a long time, Mercury really referred to, for us, was just thinking about uh, really customized instances of layout paragraphs that we have implemented on a per project basis. Um, we've been working in the last several, several months on figuring out the best way to publish this code as something that's more widely usable. And so there is a, a release now. It's actually just a dev release, but there is code now on Drupal.org. Um, I'll just, it, all, all of this is built on top of layout paragraphs, and I'll just show quickly kind of what we saw as what kind of the, the articulation of the vision was for us when we first started thinking about layout paragraphs, and again, some of these authoring tools. So there's a project for Neutrino Day. This is one a digital property and a collection of projects that we're working on for Sanford Underground Research Lab. They're the largest underground research facility in North America doing some just incredibly interesting um, work. And this is a multi-day conference, science conference. This website is for a multi-day science conference that they put on annually. 
And I think does a good job of showing, again, some of the capabilities of Mercury that, again, is built on top of layout paragraphs. So if I'm just going to edit this content in a sense for how this works, uh, Mercury provides this edit tray down the right-hand side and then automatically turns on layout paragraphs in the front end. So we're actually editing these components now in the front end. Um, with Mercury, it provides some integration actually via iframes to load the edit forms. So what that means is when I edit any of these components, the form that we're seeing is being pushed through the admin theme, in this case, Clara. So it's much simpler, um, and it makes it much easier to work in the front end without having to worry about fully theming the, the forms you know, that are being pushed out from Drupal admin. One of the modules that Mercury, um, a dependency of Mercury is style options. Style options provides the ability for layouts as well as components or, or paragraphs, we're going to use those interchangeably to define these custom styles. In this case, this website makes use of these geometric backgrounds that are associated with a section. I click into the section. I can quickly change this. This is essentially just toggling a class. What, what those styles mean is 100% dependent on the construction of the site. So that's customized to the needs of this particular website. Um, and there's a bunch of those different style options that are configured throughout this particular website. So if we go into headings, for example, a style option that we're using is just for controlling the style of a heading. So if we just want that to be bold, now the heading is completely bold with no arrow. We can go in back to styles, go back to normal, show the arrow. It's not actually showing the arrow, but it should. Um, or go to a simple style, which just simplifies again that heading. Um, again, layout paragraphs works, of course, with paragraph types. So in this case, we have this, this list of paragraph types that has been completely customized to the needs of this project. Um, one other piece that's been built, the really customization built on top of this, I talked a little bit about the duplicate functionality. This also pulls in a, another a simple custom module, again, to demo some of what layout paragraphs is capable of just from an API and providing the foundation for additional development standpoint. If I hit the save, or it looks like a download, but it's save button, I can save this piece of content as a template, give it a name. I think I've already done this once, so let's call it masthead2. Save this as a, again, as a template, and then if I go down further in the page, this has now been become an option under templates drop in that content ready to go and it drops in I'm having trouble connecting here but it drops in the content should drop in the content uh, that was duplicated from up above so it just provides a more permanent way of saving as a template all right that's a great question. The templates themselves are stored as content. So it's stored on this site. Um, there are other modules that you could use to piece together a way to stage that content, which I was just talking to somebody about yesterday, um, which is a tricky, but no, the way that works here is just as content. Yep. All right, so that's a, a look at what this can look like in a more customized environment. And that is about all I had, so I should have plenty of time for answering any questions. Any other questions? Have any of you guys used this before? Okay. But we're sort of literally starting to Gotcha. Yeah. That's definitely a goal. Was that was the goal was to to build something that was more editor, yeah. just what you said, more editor focused. I feel like there's, there's still a struggle here. If you have a bunch of them. 
is they don't do any sort of convert to get it when there's this claim that we can get inside on the way the paragraph's close. We want to try to replicate with the front of the lead, but if we're doing it back and doing it down the same way that these suggestions work, so they're just in the south, you know, or in the south, you know, or in the south. Yeah, so I would, I would check out. Okay, so the, the question is how to. Um, it doesn't have the exact most like close, you know, like if they have a C in, they put north of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of that sort of thing. Okay. Right. So the whole goal of AM paragraphs is to make the authoring experience closely follow the front end. I don't know if they were like I don't love the phrase WYSIWYG, but it'd be as close to a WYSIWYG as possible and provide as little um, distraction or, or kind of break in the that editorial process as possible by making it look like so you can see what you're doing basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but and and the question is how do you make if you're on the edit tab, how do you make that look like what you see on the view tab? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the main way that we've gotten around that is by implementing layout paragraphs actually on the view tab. And I, I don't know if you've played with that at all, but there's actually a setting, and I, I should have showed this earlier, but if we go back into the, this again, simple demo site, take a look at content types, go back into basic page, and manage display. Um, in addition to the layout paragraphs display, there's this experimental layout paragraphs builder choose builder, hit save, we go back to our content. Now on the view tab, we have this edit content thing. Have you played with this at all? And if you, once you click edit content, you're now editing, you, I mean, you're now on the view tab. So it, this is- So it's already rendering the, so it's rendering part of the view. Correct. Correct. Exactly. And now, now the challenge becomes reversed. So now we're looking at the front end theme, the customized theme. It's a little hard to see that that's what's going on when we're using Oliveira right out of the box. Uh, but now we're looking at the front end theme. Um, and the issue is that when you hit edit on a, any paragraph, it's also rendering the edits forms using the front end screen. And so then the challenge becomes like theming the, the forms you know, making sure that you're exactly, exactly. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And the way that's actually useful for yeah. Yeah, and then and there's some other challenges with this approach too. I mean, things to think about around the translation workflow around like now we have this kind of split experience of an edit tab up here, but also an edit button down below. Um, a lot of that is what Mercury seeks to solve. It is available on Drupal.org. It's worth checking out, even if it's just to see how that module is solving some of those problems. And a few ways that it does that is one, when you click edit, you get this edit tray that slides out on the right, along with your save and close buttons, any workflow moderation, state changes that you want to make, et cetera. So you're really doing, it, it's really still a single button, a single process to edit the content. Um, and then also a, a big improvement that again is available in Mercury is hitting the edit tab or really anything that renders these admin forms, all of that's being rendered in an iframe. So it's rendering the admin, all the admin content in an iframe. And the value there is that you can render with whatever theme you want to. So you can push all that out. This is the example I've shown before. It's just using uh, Clarity. So this is a customized version of the, I uh, mean, you know, a, a customized front end theme. The forms would look terrible if we were just using the default, using that theme, because we haven't themed all of the forms. Clicking edit, what we're looking at here is pushing all that through Clara in an iframe. It does, yeah. Yeah, so it makes a, it saves, refreshes the component, re renders it on the page. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, the Mercury experience is like, you're running a little bit of comfort on yeah. WordPress, and I feel like that's an easy transition for people coming over. Um, I'm curious how long, how long would you use the customer feedback that you got on, on this really like, on, on the end of experience? I assume it's welcome. Yeah, it, it definitely has been. So we're still, um, I mean, it feels like it's relatively early and also feels like I've been working on this for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, feedback so far has been really positive. I mean, definitely what, we've, what we're have hearing consistently is that challenges in the editorial experience are a big detractor for Drupal, honestly. And, and, I, and the way that's often articulated is really close to what you just said, actually, is uh, in the decision making about WordPress versus Drupal, Drupal's too complicated. Our editors want something simple that just works for them, we're going to use WordPress. Um, and that's that's the challenge that this attempts to solve. Um, 
feedback has been good. I mean, some of the challenges that we talked about earlier are challenges that we have seen is how do you make, if you choose to go the edit tab route, and we've done this with clients who are building headless implementations, for example, as I was saying before, not very difficult to get all that information out through the API. What's a little trickier is getting the edit tab to render that content in a way that really resembles the front end so that it's an improvement, so that it actually does, does its job and is an improvement. It's doable, but it's, it's a little trickier. Um, those are things that we're, we're working on as well. Um, it looks really slick. Great. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. The, quickly, also, one, it is, I definitely hear the comparison to Gutenberg often and often um, get questions around what's the difference. And Gutenberg, and, there's, and Gutenberg is available for Drupal also. There's a, a Drupal module for, for doing that. But Gutenberg stores everything in a, in a text field, essentially, at the end of the day. It, in its simplest form, it stores everything in a text field and is reconstructing that, that all of the references to blocks or whatever it's using to render. And so it steps a little bit outside of the structured content model that is native to Drupal. And we wanted something that worked within that. And our, our thinking around that is that the best opportunity for that um, was working with the paragraphs module, which, which does that. So it keeps us in that structured content. Yeah. So there it makes config and content storage though with, with the content for the paragraphs themselves. I mean, configuration of paragraphs are stored in config with one paragraph actually part of the structural data as content. That's right. We're fully exportable from like a config. It's not exportable. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The con the information about layouts themselves is not is not exportable. It is content. So we were, and and that's another distinction between this and maybe layout builder, is when we think about layout paragraphs, um, we are thinking purely about content and about the content authoring experience. It's it, we don't think of layout paragraphs as a site building tool as much as we do an authoring tool and a tool for, for actually contributing content. That's great. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a module called Default Content. Are you familiar with that? Was anybody else familiar with that? That we we use quite a bit. Usually in the development stage of a project, there's a patch for that. That uh, it's, it's the whole problem of staging content. Of course, is super complicated and and arguably not even what we should be doing, depending on how you kind of think about content. Um, but that model can help a lot and help. It's a simple way to push content into code, and it works very nicely with layout paragraphs. Because again, layout paragraphs is just layout paragraphs is really just a UI on top of paragraphs with a little bit of extra data stored around layout information itself, um, and all that's using the behavior system in in paragraphs. So it's all just using APIs that are available in paragraphs out of the box. Yeah. So, so I think you just said this, but I just want to repeat that you if you've got to say that using paragraphs now, uh, it's completely backward compatible than if you install a uh, layout paragraphs. Other than we can have to modify your theme to, to handle the new situations, uh, you don't have to restructure anything else. Right? You just work with it because they don't have to continue to work with it once. You know, layout paragraphs now that you can do it That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So layout paragraphs. You can install uh, paragraphs on a website that is using the paragraphs module, and it will work 
out of the box um, without the need to change anything about your configuration. You'll need to make a few configuration changes to actually support the layouts themselves, but that's what I was showing earlier. If we go into paragraph types and just take a look at that section content, um, which I was showing before, those layouts become available. So we have to we have to choose which layouts are actually available to our section paragraph type and create a section paragraph type to store that data. Um, we often use layout paragraphs even if we're not doing layout, just because the the experience, at least in our view, is is a is a big improvement for dragging and dropping paragraphs around the page, being able to easily duplicate them on the page. Um, that we usually prefer, most settings prefer um, that experience, so we just use that for that that purpose. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.